Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. And all that is within us, bless his holy name. And how was everybody tonight? Blessed and highly, Blessed and highly flavored. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. God's got a plan, amen? amen. And we're in it. But one of the things the Lord always likes to do is expose the enemy's plan. Amen. Yes, sir. <laughs> Glory. Would you grab your swords tonight, please? And turn to the book of Hebrews. Chapter 5. Hebrew 5. Praise God. In verse 12. Would you read it with me, please? For though by this time you ought to be what? Teachers. Ought to be what? Teachers. How many of y'all know we're called to be teachers? Amen. Amen. So everything that we get, we should have in our minds, how can I teach what I'm learned, what I'm taught? Amen. When you begin to do that, when you have an, a mindset that how can I teach what I'm learning, then it goes into your spirit. Other than that, the enemy comes and steals it. And one of the things we want to do is always stay multiple steps to the enemy. Stay ahead of him in every area. It says, for by this time you ought to be teachers. You need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God. And you have come to need milk and not what? Solid food. Solid food. For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. And I want you to understand that there are many people who are, could be uh, in the kingdom 30 years and are still babes. Amen. But verse 14, but solid food belongs to those who are what? Full age. Full age. That is those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and what? evil. In other words, these senses are now trained. These are called trained senses and it's established by maturity. You know, with maturity comes increase and the capacity to see things from God's angle. See, many people don't see things through God's angle. That's why they can only take the letter, but they don't get full understanding of what the Spirit says. I get many people that try to tell about casting out devils when they've never cast out a devil in their life. Amen. They try about speaking in tongues when they don't even speak in tongues. They try about laying, oh, God doesn't heal anymore when they've never even been anointed to lay hands on the sick. And many people try to do that they, they're, because they're bound by religion. They're immature Amen. and in that arena. But God wants to do a quick move. He's causing a quickening to advance the into the maturity in these last days. If those who are willing to. But there are many that will be struggled and be stubborn to keep what they have. And be afraid of letting go. And advance. Amen. <clears throat> One of the things that. As, a, as we grow in maturity, we begin to learn how to filter everything through the grid of God's word, which allows us to discern his will and able to pick up signals and interpret things. We have to put these things to practice. So one of the things that we do is we believe, we receive, and we execute. There's no hesitation. People are able to, there are people who are able to repeat information taught to them, but they're not able to apply it correctly in real life situations. That's a sign of immaturity. And one of the things that we need to be, especially right now, is discerning times and seasons. 
where we are right now. What's going on? Many people are so caught up in their own lives that they're not caught up in the life of God. That's a sign of immaturity. And Isaiah 14. Twenty-three years ago, on April 15th, around 2.15 p.m., I had a visitation from the Lord. And I was taken in the glory of God. And in that, I did not want to come back. I said, if this is death, I'll take it. I didn't care about anybody or anything, man. It was the most awesome high you could ever have. Coming from being an addict, trying to get high, I got high. I got so high, I thought I was going to die. But it's a different high. It's a purity. It's love. It's, it's, it's a high. See, people look to get high in the world because they're actually looking for true God, tr God's true love. But it's a counterfeit. And so the enemy counterfeits everything. And when I said to the Lord, I said, if this is death I want, I want to stay with you forever. He didn't have to say anything. The cloud lifted from me. I knew he said it wasn't time yet. And my 80-pound Doberman dog was with me. And the, the presence of God was right in front of me. And one of the first words out of his mouth, he said, my Bible is true because I was told as a child that the Bible is nothing but a story. And I don't want stories. I want truth. And my dog began to bark, and I was hearing this rattling sound, and I looked to the left of me while the presence of God was in front of me. And I saw this black, hissing, snake-like serpent, very vicious. He was trying to bite my dog, and my dog's head was moving back and forth, supernaturally. And I'm watching this 80-pound Doberman dog dodge this serpent like this. And I looked at the Lord because I was concerned about my dog. I had no fear. And I said, Lord, what do I do? And the next thing I know, I stood up and my hand went towards this black serpent that just came out of my, or that just manifested. And I said, from the love of God, I curse you, Satan. And I said to the Lord, man, this stuff only happens in Star Trek. And he said, no, guy, that came out of you. I'm sharing this with you because this was not a dream. This was not a vision. This was a reality and a moment of time. That occurred. And when I realized about serpents, and the Lord brought me through a teaching of serpents, and how snakes are the most cursed animals on the planet, and they carry demons. And I began to realize about things that are carried, that demons are carried, disembodied spirits looking for some. And I began to realize that a snake is a reptile. And I began to think about, well, what about the serpent of Satan? And I began to do some research, and I, and, and, I, and I began to find that certain things occurred, especially when the angels who put on flesh and came into the world. One of their judgments was to be changed, chained to judgment, but another one of their judgments was that they would no longer look like angels. They were no longer beautiful. They became ugly. And one of the things I want to share that these demonic forces really <laughs> we have to repeat the last one <laughs> well praise God we rebuke this weather in the name of Jesus go Go around this place and don't hit the ceiling anymore. The blood of the lamb on this place in Jesus' name. Water everything else. Amen. Glory. Isaiah 14 and verse 12. <laughs> Praise God. Dad. 
Come on, everybody, lift your hands to heaven and pray to the Holy Ghost. Andalavi Arumogorada Shata Gafaso Shanamogor Shanto Kushata Kasia. Ambaka Takasa Shanamogalabi Ambronda Gafroto Koso Shuruboko. Amburuboko Sushuruboko Lobi Alam and Naria Daga Shanto Kushata Kashanto Kushata Kushata Kasia. Andalavi Ambronda Gafroto Koso Shuruboko Lobi Kira Mogosan Shunda Asan Shanda Kasia Bakoso. In Isaiah 14 and verse 12, would you read it with me? How you have what? Fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How you are cut down to the ground, you who weaken the nations. For you have said in your heart, I, I will what? Ascend into the heavens. So then where was he? He was on the earth. This is when he was... Uh, praise and worship leader of the universe, and the earth was the center known as the mountain of God. He said, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the farther sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds, and I will be like the most high. And of course, the Lord's response was, you're going to the pit, homie. You shall be brought down to Sheol, which means hell, to the lowest depths of the pit. Now, we see something profound here because when we are alienated from the life of God, and anything that is alienated from the life of God is called alien. Everybody got it? Even you and I were known as alien according to compared to the kingdom of God. We were aliens. Amen? Amen? We were lost, living outside of salvation's truth. We were considered aliens. And anything that is alienated from the life and the will of God Almighty is considered alien. Amen? And there is... So one of the things that Lucifer, he was God's right-hand man. He was with God when everything was created. He knows all technology. He knows physics. He knows everything. He was there when God created. He walked in the midst of the fiery stones when God created the earth. He saw it all. And he became the worship leader of the universe. In fact, the earth was inhabited with angels. They had cities and so forth and everything. So I want to share about alien agendas. An alien agenda. In other words, these aliens, again, are demons. They're fallen angels. They're an alienated from the will and the life of God Almighty. There's an alien agenda going on. The first agenda is... Right here, what we read it is they want to be like gods. Does everybody understand that? They want to be like gods. That's not stopped. That's still going on. See, one of the things that's vitally important is that we make what is unseen to become seen. That's the problem that's happening right now in the parts of the kingdom of God. People are too carnal. They're too caught up in their life. And they're not truly seeing what God is asking them to see. Their hearts have grown dull. Remember, Jesus said, you must, if you want to be my disciple, you must deny yourself. Pick up your cross, which means fight. You must become a battler, a warrior. And then you can follow me. If you're not willing to fight, it's impossible to follow. Amen. And those who are not in a battle become casualties. God says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, which is understanding and discernment. He said, many will fall from the faith, taking heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. It's happening already. There's a tremendous falling away going on. Tremendous. Many believers are beginning to fall away and follow itchy ears. They're itchy ears. They want to, whatever they have their own belief system in, they want to get around someone or a fellowship that believes the same way they do instead of truth. Well, I'm a lover of truth and I'm a lover of the presence of truth. I met truth. His name is Jesus. 
in Genesis chapter 6. Again, the, their agenda is to be like God's. Amen? In verse 1, Genesis 6. Let's speak it. Now it came to pass when men began to multiply in the face of the earth and daughters were born to them that the angels or sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were beautiful and they took wives for themselves and all whom they chose. So we have angelic beings that may put on flesh. In other words, they were, became a sh they were able to shape shift. Does everybody understand that? They were able to put on flesh. They were angelic beings. They had the power to shape, shape, shift their selves into a human. That's pretty wild, isn't it? You know, we don't hear about this stuff. Everything is so stinking religious, it gets me sick. But it's time that the eyes of man get open and find out what really is going on, what is the agenda, and who you're fighting. And it says, and the Lord said, my spirit shall not strive with man forever, for he is indeed flesh, yet his days are going to become 120 years. And there were giants on the earth in those days, and we know those giants came from Cain. Amen? Because of the sleeping with uh, the serpent and Eve. And there's giants on those days, and also after when the sons of God, the angels, came into the daughters of men, and they bore children to them. These were the mighty men who were of old, and men of what? Renown. Renown. So they, would be, they wanted to become like what? Gods. Amen? In other words, their, the, one of their agendas was to infiltrate mankind, mankind's DNA, and mix it with their rebellious blood. They wanted to create a new race of their own by interbreeding to destroy the image and likeness of God by changing man's DNA. This was their agenda. They began to produce hybrids, and it happened. That's why God destroyed the whole earth with the flood. Amen? Amen? In John 10, thank God Jesus came to bring back the true DNA. It's a spiritual DNA, isn't it? But unfortunately, we still struggle, struggle with the genetic alien DNA even to this day. That's what lust is. Oh, glory. May we get understanding. In John chapter 10, in verse 7, would you read it with me? Then Jesus said to them again, My most assuredly I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. And all who enter come be came before me and are thieves and robbers. Do you hear that? And all who ever came before me are what? Thieves and robbers. In other words, before he came. But the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief. Who's the thief? The wicked one. Amen. Does not come except to what? Steal, to kill, and to destroy. Do you see the agenda here? What's the agenda? To steal, kill, and destroy all of mankind. I have come that they may have, a, have life and that they may have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. But the harling, he who is not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. The problem is there's too many hirelings that do not see the wolf at all. The hireling flees because he is a hireling and does not care about the sheep. I am the good shepherd and I know my sheep and am known by my sheep. As the father knows me, even so I know the father and I lay down my life for the sheep. 
The other sheep I have which are not of this fold, them also I must bring. And they will, what? Hear my voice, and there will be one flock and one shepherd. Again, the alien agenda. Again, aliens. People are so caught up in these flying saucers and whatever. And I'm not saying they're not aliens, but what are they? Fallen angels. Nephilim. Again, this must be expressed because one of the things that they're going to attempt to do is deceive mankind in a tremendous way. People are looking for something else to happen, and I'm telling you something different is going to happen. In Revelation chapter 12, That's why Jesus said, be careful. They're going to come and say that Jesus is here. And he says, don't go there. Remember, what is Satan's purpose? To be God. He's going to come as the Messiah. And people are going to look to him. And how he's going to come is going to blow people's mind. Oh, glory. <laughs> I don't know if we're ready for all that yet. Revelation chapter 12. And verse 1, would you read it with me? Now a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet and on her head a garland of 12 stars. Then being with child, she cried out in labor and in pain to give birth. And another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a what? Great, fiery, red dragon. Oh, hallelujah. Having seven heads and ten horns and seven diamonds on his heads. His tail drew a third of the stars, which means angels, of heaven and threw them to the earth. Who's the dragon? Satan. And the dragon stood before the woman who was ready to give birth to devour her child as soon as it was born. She bore a male child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. Nations as associated with ethnic groups or different types of individual people. Amen. And her child was caught up to God and his throne. Then the woman fled into the wilderness where she has a place prepared by God that they should feed her there 1,260 days, which is actually three and a half years. The woman is twofold. God speaks about multidimensional. The Bible is multidimensional, past, present, and future. And only through the Spirit of God can we interpret and understand what he is saying. The carnal mind cannot. The carnal mind only takes things face value and still doesn't get it. That's why people, there's still a struggle. People don't believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. People don't believe in praying in tongues. People, just goofiness. Because they're still outer quarters. They've never entered the holy place or the most holy place. They've never fulfilled priesthood. But in this word where it says the woman, the woman is associated not only with Israel, but also with the body of Christ because we are called the bride and he is the bridegroom. Amen. It says, And the woman fled into the wilderness for three and a half years. And verse 7, it says, war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought. But they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. This is the third heaven. Because Satan's kingdom reigns in the second and first heaven. So the great dragon was cast out. The what? Serpent of old called the devil and Satan. Who what? Who what? Deceives the whole world. Is that still going on? Yeah. He was cast to the earth and his angels were cast out with him. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and the strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ has come. For the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives to death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. But woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea. For the devil has come down to you having great 
wrath because he knows that his time is short. Now, when the dragon saw that he had been cast to the earth, he persecuted the woman who gave birth to the male child. This is the agenda to destroy the woman, the body of Christ, and the child who is now the bridegroom. But when the woman was given, the, but the woman was given two wings of a great eagle. The body of Christ was given two wings. And I believe the two wings is associated with Moses and Elijah, which is associated with the rapture of the church. That she might fly, fly, hello. Ever remember that song, Fly, Fly Away? Into the wilderness to her place where she is nourished for time and times and half, which is three and a half years. From the presence of the serpent. That sounds like us, doesn't it? So the serpent spewed water out of his mouth like a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away by the flood. But the earth helped the woman and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon had spewed out of his mouth. And the dragon was enraged with the woman. And he went to make war with the rest of her offspring. You know how many people are going to get saved after the rapture? Because the rapture is a sign. They may miss the first trip out, but they're going to realize the reality. Who the real God is. Many people will come to the Lord. The problem is, is they'll have to go through tribulation. They'll either be beheaded or starved to death. The main thing is, is that they do not take the mark of the beast. And a dragon was enraged with the woman, and he went to make war with the rest of her offspring who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Again, the agenda is to dominate the world and destroy all that pertains to God's people and his will. This is the agenda. See, they know that time is running out. That's why you're seeing all kinds of things occur now. It's like, Everything is coming out of the closet. We're seeing transgenders. We're seeing more promotion of homosexuality and more promotion of abortion. Everything is okay. All evil is okay now. Amen? So you definitely know that time is coming to a close. Go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Is everybody there? In verse 1, now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our what? Gathering together to him, we ask you, what's the gathering together to him? It's the rapture. Amen. Not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled either by spirit or by word or by letter as if from us as though the day of Christ had come. Let no one deceive you by any means. See, they're going to try to tell you that it's already happened. In fact, they're going to try to state that even after we've been raptured, that the evil has been removed. So that people of the world are deceived. Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first, and it's already begun. And the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition. He is the son of perdition. He'll be known as the Antichrist. He is the seed of the serpent. He will not be Satan himself. The Antichrist is his seed, his offspring. He will be a Nephilim. Who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worship, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things, and now you know what is restraining that he may be revealed in his own time? For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. That is, the body of Christ will be removed all the way, and all hell will break out. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will what? Eventually consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless ones according to the working of what? Satan, with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. 
And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion that they, mar they should believe the lie, that they all may be condemned who do not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. But we are bound to give thanks to God always for you, brethren, beloved, by the Lord, because God from the beginning chose you for salvation through sanctification by the Spirit and belief in the truth, to which he called you by our gospel for the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which you were taught, whether by word or our epistle. And now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and our God and Father, who have loved us, given us everlasting consolation and good hope by grace, comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. Again, we see an agenda. This is the alien agenda. It is to take over everything. It is to promote one world order, one world religion, and one world economy. It is, is, I want you to grab hold that this is a collective working together with all governments in exchange for technology. Think about it in the last 50 years where we have come from. Where do you think this technology came from? And remember, now technology is kind of in the arena. I mean, what is www666 on a website? Amen? All, all barcodes have all, every one of them has a 666 in it. It's hidden, though. Everything is associated with 666, one world order, one world government, one world religion, one world uh, economy. So that it's all ruled under Satan's kingdom as dictator of his new race. He doesn't want mankind's race. Why? Because he wants to be like God who created this earth and created man. So he's doing his own creating, but he's doing hybrid. That's why there's abductions and all kinds of other things going on. In 1 John chapter 3, Alien agenda. Unfortunately, their agenda is going to backfire because we know the end. I guess I should say, not unfortunately. Unfortunately for them, but fortunate for us. In 1 John chapter 3, Starting at verse 1, let's speak it. Beloved, what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called children of God. Therefore, the world does not know us. Why? Now, in other words, at one time we were alienated from God, right? But now we're aliens to the world. We're peculiar. Therefore, the world does not know us because it did not know him. Beloved, now we are children of God and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. But we know that when he is revealed, we shall be what? Like him. For we shall see him as he is. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness and sin is lawlessness. And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins and in him there is no sin. Whoever abides in him does not sin. Whoever sins has neither seen him nor known him. Little children, let us not, let, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous just as he is righteous. He who sins is of the devil. For the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. In this, Whoever has been born of God does not sin for his what? Seed what? Remains. His seed remains. So can the seed be stolen? Yes. Does everybody understand that? His seed remains in him and he cannot sin because he has been born of God. 
In this the children of God and the children of the devil are manifest. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he who does not love his brother. So you've got to know them by the fruit. And we've got to become real with this now. I don't care if they hold political offices. I don't care who they are. Amen. If they don't practice righteousness, they're of the devil. Amen? Amen. Now, can God use anyone? Can he use the devil? Amen? He can use them to do anything, can he? Isn't he going to use them to do his wrath? Amen. Amen? So just because God uses someone doesn't mean that they're right with God. Amen. Amen. Oh, glory. Let's go a little further. Go to Daniel chapter 2. You know, even the devil knows the word of God. In fact, he can outwit anyone <laughs> about the word of God. But that's all you need to do is plead the blood of Jesus and he's gone. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Daniel. Daniel chapter, what did I say, 2? Daniel 2. In verse 36. Nebuchadnezzar. He was a heathen. <laughs> but God called him his servant. <laughs> In verse 36. This is the dream that Daniel interprets his dream. Now we will tell the interpretation of it before the king. You, O king, are the king of kings, for the God of heaven has given you a kingdom, power, strength, and glory. And wherever the children of men dwell, or the beasts of the field, and the birds in the air, he has given them into your hand and has made you ruler over them all. You are the head of gold. But after you shall arise another kingdom inferior to yours, then another a third kingdom of bronze, which shall rule over the earth. And the fourth kingdom, which shall be strong as what? Iron. Inasmuch as iron breaks in pieces and shatters everything, and like iron that crushes, that kingdom will break in pieces and crush all the others. Now, I want you to understand that this is not only prophetically something that is going to come to pass, but it has already happened once in this period of time but it's going to happen again because you'll read about a fourth kingdom that will come forth and out of that fourth kingdom in the book of revelation will come the antichrist verse 41 whereas you saw the feet and the toes and partly of the potter's clay and partly of iron the kingdom shall be divided yet the strength of the iron shall be in it Look at this. Watch this carefully. Just as you saw iron mixed with the ceramic clay, and as the toes of the feet were partly of iron and partly of clay, so the kingdom should be partly strong and partly fragile. And you saw iron mixed with ceramic clay. They will mingle with the what? Seed of men. They will mingle with the what? That's alien. That's serpent seed mingling with the seed of man. Does everybody understand this? But they will not adhere to one another just as iron does not mix with clay. And in the days of these kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed and the kingdom shall not be left to another people. It shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms and it shall stand forever. Does everybody get this? Let's go a little bit further. Oh, glory. And as much as you saw that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands and that it broke into pieces, the iron, the bronze, the clay, the silver, and the gold, the great God has made known to the king what will come to pass after this dream. And the dream is certain and interpretation is sure. Then King Nebuchadnezzar fell on his face, prostrate before Daniel, and commanded that they should present an offering and increase to him. 
The king answered Daniel and said, Truly, your God is the God of gods, the Lord of kings, and the revealer of secrets, since you could reveal the secret. Then the king promoted Daniel and gave him many great gifts, and he made him ruler over the whole providence of Babylon and chief minister over all wise men of Babylon. Again, you see, this was prophetic about mixing with the seed of mankind. That is called, that's why there's the word of the tares in the wheat. The what? The tares in the wheat. Oh, glory. Let's go to Matthew 13, where the tares in the wheat are. You know, I truly believe that many things that have been put on TV in the last five or six years especially a lot of sci-fi and many other things. You're, you're seeing friendly demons, friendly hybrids. You're seeing all of these things because Hollywood, the word Hollywood, which means it's a wand of witchcraft. It's a wood, a staff of witchcraft. That's what, why? Because it promotes deception. See, the ruler of this world, Satan, in his kingdom, which backs all, he's in his hands in everything. It's an education it's in medicine, it's in the technology, it's a money system, and everything else. And, and in this, you can see that he is preparing and maintaining this deception arena on a constant level. Does everybody understand that? Um, in Matthew 13, verse 24. Would you read it with me? 13.24. And another parable he put forth to them saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, he, his enemy came and sowed what? Tares among the wheat and went his way. How did he do that? By coming in the flesh and seducing the women of mankind and producing seed line. And it's still going on. But when the grain had sprouted and produced a crop, then the tares also appeared. So the servants of the owner came and said to him, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have tares? And he said to them, An enemy has done this. The servant said to him, Do you want us then to go and gather them up? And he said, no, lest while you gather up the tares, you also uproot the wheat with them. Let them both grow together until the harvest. And at the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, first gather together the tares and bind them in bundles and burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. And of course, he's talking about the fallen ones. Amen the children of the devil, the offsprings, the hybrids, the Nephilims, And we are, of course, the wheat. Amen? Amen. Praise God. In Revelation 19. In verse 1. Let's read this together. Then the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star falling from heaven to the earth. Remember, this is associated with what? An angel. Fallen angel. To him was given the key to the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit. Think about this. He opened the bottomless pit. Where all demonic forces are. And smoke arose out of the pit like the smoke of a great furnace. So the sun and the air were darkened because of the smoke of the pit. Then out of the smoke, locusts came up from the earth and to them was given power as the scorpions of the earth have power. They were commanded not to harm the grass of the earth or any green thing or any tree, but only the, those men who do not have the seal of God on their foreheads. They were not given authority to kill them, but to torment them for five months their torment was like the torment of a scorpion when it strikes a man. 
In those days, men will seek death and will not find it. This will be a part of their judgment, won't it? They will desire to die and death will flee from them. But remember, by no means anyone that has the seal of God will be touched. The shape of the locusts was like horses prepared for battle. On their heads were crowns of some, something like gold, and their faces were like the faces of men. Now, I want you to grab hold of something because this came out of the bottomless pit. These are the angels that left their abode that no longer look like angels. Does everybody get this? They had hair like woman's hair and their teeth were like lion's teeth. They had breastplates like breastplates of iron and the sound of their wings was like the sound of chariots with many horses running into the battle. They had tails like scorpions and there were stings in their tails. Their power was to hurt men five months. And they had a king over them, the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in Hebrew is Abaddon, but in Greek, he has the name of Apollyon. Now, the temple of Apollyon is right beneath CERN. Yes. Does everybody get it? One of the temples of Apollyon was right beneath CERN. Oh, hallelujah. Verse 12. One woe is past, behold, still two more woes are coming after these things. So we see what's going on here. Their agenda. Does everybody get it? This is the alien agenda. Remember, aliens are not from another planet. Because this is what's going to be the great deception. Even Catholicism has been deceived already. They believe that they can take these aliens and convert them. Dumb. In fact, they own the most powerful telescope in the world. It's an infrared telescope in Arizona. And it's called Lucifer. Look it up. Oh, glory. Revelation 13. Is everybody okay? Samar Samaritans and Egyptians were hybrids. Look at, at that time of Pharaoh. I don't have enough time to go into all this, so I'm going to have to throw some stuff out here. Look at Pharaoh. Didn't he call himself God? Didn't they all wear serpent? You know... Like the banners, you know. People don't realize that 666 is also a representation of in the name of Allah. <laughs> Who do you think, what do you think he's going to use, that army? The Bible says that the people will be beheaded. What religion beheads? See, people don't know. It's uh, um, Greek Arabic. It means in the, name, in the name of Allah, 666. It's translation. Now, there are multiple translations. Okay, Re Revelation 13, verse 1. Let's speak it. Then I stood on the sand of the sea, and I saw what? A beast. Remember, beasts are representation of Nephilim, fallen ones. Beasts rising up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and on his head, and on his horns, ten crowns, and on his heads, a blasphemous name. Now the beast which I saw was like a leopard. His feet were like the feet of a bear. And his mouth was like the mouth of a lion. The dragon gave him his power, his throne, and great authority. I saw one of his heads as it had been mortally wounded. Hmm. And his deadly wound was healed. And all the world marveled and followed the beast. This is a Nephilim. So they worshiped the dragon who gave authority to the beast 
And they worshiped the beast, saying, Who is like the beast who is able to make war with him? Do you understand? Do you see the deception? They will follow the beast. Hey, I actually believe he becomes the Messiah. And he was given a mouth, speaking great things, blasphemies. And he was given authority to continue 42 months, which is three and a half years again. Then he opened his mouth and blessed me against God and blessed me his name, his tabernacle, and those who dwell in heaven. It was granted to make war with the saints and overcome them. And authority was given him over every tribe, tongue, and nation. All who dwell on the earth will worship him, whose names have not been written in the book of life of the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world. If anyone has an ear, let him hear he who leads into captivity shall go into captivity. He who kills with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Then I saw another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb and spoke like a dragon. And he exercises all authority of the first beast in his presence and causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. He performs great signs so that he even makes fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. And he deceives those who dwell on the earth by those signs which were granted to do in the sight of the beast, telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image to the beast who was wounded by the sword and lived. He was granted power to give to the image of the beast that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. This image also be a Nephilim. He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a what? Mark on their right hand or on their forehead, that no one may buy or sell except one who has to mark the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is the wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 666. Again, you can see the genetic traits coming down all of these lines. Even in, in Esau was one also. People don't realize. Go to Genesis 25. Genesis 25. And verse 23. Uh, and verse 21. Now Isaac pleaded with the Lord for his wife because she was barren and the Lord granted his plea and Rebekah, his wife, conceived but the child struggled together within her. And she said, if all is well, why am I like this? So she went to inquire of the Lord. And the Lord said to her, two nations are in your womb. That's wild. Same thing that happened to Eve. Two peoples, hello, shall be Separated from your body. One people shall be stronger than the other, and the older shall serve the younger. So when her days were fulfilled for her to give birth, indeed there were twins in her womb. And the first came out red. Hallelujah. What was the color of the dragon? Red. He was like a hairy garment all over. So they called his name Esau. Afterward, his brother came out, and his hand took hold of Esau's heel. So his name was called Jacob. Isaac was 60 years old when she bore them. So the boys grew, and Esau was a skillful hunter, a man of the field. But Jacob was a mild man dwelling in tents. And Isaac loved Esau because he ate his game, but Rebekah loved Jacob. Now Jacob cooked stew and Esau came in from the field and he was weary and Esau said to Jacob, please feed me with that same stew, red stew. 
for I am weary. Therefore, his name was called Adam. Now, I want you to know that all the Edomites were all hybrids from this family line from Esau. They were all hybrids, every one of them. But Jacob said, sell me your birthright of this day. Esau said, look, I am about to die. So what is this birthright to me? He had no concern about the birthright. Does everybody get it? Why? Because he was not the seed of God. He was the seed of serpent come down the family line. Is everybody okay? Then Jacob said, swear to me as this day. So he swore to him and, and sold his birthright to Jacob. And Jacob gave Esau bread and stew of lentils. Then he ate and drank, arose and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. Because it really wasn't his birthright. Amen? Does everybody get that? Nimrod was the same way. In Genesis chapter 10. Genesis 10. Now let's just go to verse 8 and 9. Cush was a son of Ham. Ham married a hybrid or Nephilim after the flood. And it says in verse 8, Cush begot Nimrod. He began to be a what? Mighty one on the earth. He was a mighty hunter just like Esau. Before the Lord, therefore its name, it, therefore it is said like Nimrod, the mighty hunter before the Lord. And the beginning of his kingdom was Babel, Iraq, Akkad, Kalami, and the land of Shinar, which is Iraq. What did Nimrod build? Tower of Babel. Amen. To be like God. Does everybody see this? Everybody understand? So we're looking at an alien agenda. Its purpose is to destroy all mankind, all human. DNA and create their own race. That's their purpose. And they're willing to do it. And the government has made a deal with them already. Technology for humans. Hello? Pretty wild, isn't it? Do you know that there are 300,000 children missing every year from this country? 300,000 children missing every year. That's pretty lot, isn't it? I mean, that's phenomenal. That's phenomenal. Whew. Oh, hallelujah. Let's go to uh, Zechariah 14. Where are those kids going? Three hundred thousand children missing a year. <clears throat> Zechariah. In verse uh, 14, I mean, uh, chapter 14, verse 12. And this shall be the plague with which the Lord will strike all the people who fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall dissolve while they stand on their feet. Their eyes shall dissolve in their sockets. Their tongues shall dissolve in their mouths. It shall come to pass in that day that the great panic from the Lord will be among them everywhere. Everyone will seize the hand of his neighbor and raise his hand against his neighbor's hand. Judah also will fight at Jerusalem and the wealth of all the surrounding nations shall be gathered together, gold, silver, and apparel in great abundance. Such also, such also shall be the plague on the horse and the mule and the camel and the donkey and on the cattle that will be in those camps, so shall this plague be. 
And it shall come to pass that everyone who is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall go up from year to year to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, and keep the Feast of Tabernacles. And it shall be that whichever the families on the earth do not come up to Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, on them there will be no rain. If the family of Egypt will not come up and enter in, they shall have no rain. They shall receive the plague which the Lord will strike the nations who do not come up to the keep the Feast of Tabernacles. This shall be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all nations that do not come up to the Feast of Tabernacles. And that day holiness to the Lord shall be engraved on the bells of the horses. The pots in the Lord's house shall be like the bowls before the altar. Yes, every pot in Jerusalem and Judah shall be holiness to the Lord of hosts. Everyone whose sacrifices shall come and take them and cook them. And that day there shall no longer be a what? Canaanite, Nephilim, in the house of the Lord of hosts. Oh, glory. I got a lot more, but we're good. First John chapter 5, and we'll close. Is everybody okay? Yeah. Alien agenda. Satan's agenda. It's real simple. Oh, the world is about to get really deceived, man. Do you know that there are more alien sightings or whatever, UFOs, than ever? They've got them on film. They've got them landing. They've got these demons coming out of them and taking off. They've got all kinds of stuff. They have dead ones they found because they're trying to produce their own bodies. Is everybody okay? <laughs> so if you run into one, just say in the name of Jesus and pop off its head for a souvenir. <laughs> First John chapter 5, verse 18. Hey, if you show somebody one of those, they'll believe you, right? Amen. Hopefully, anyways. Unless they're one of them already. We know that whoever is born of God does not sin, but he who has been born of God keeps himself, and the wicked one does not touch him. We know that we are of God and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. And we know that the Son of God has come and given us an understanding that we may know him who is true and we are in him who is true. In his Son, Jesus Christ, this is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols and lies of this world. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Lord, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask that the seed be protected and grow and bear fruit for your glory. <laughs> and that you'd grant us discernment and wisdom. Discernment and wisdom. And when to share this and who to share this with. In Jesus' name.